high school experience like? You know, my high school years, if I'm really honest, were, uh, you know, a lot of depression, very broken. I, my parents got divorced when I was younger. Um, I grew up just seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of brokenness in my home. I just remember uh, feeling like I had no purpose, feeling like I, you know, what was the point of my existence? You know, there's a lot of moments. I, even one time I even, you know, dumped a bunch of pills in my hand and sat there and looked in the mirror and, you know, wondered what is truly stopping me from just consuming this and just ending my life here. And, uh, you know, I spent a lot of my high school years, you know, just quiet by myself. Um, and it wasn't until I, you know, I, I really encountered Jesus that I was able to come out of that place. How did you come to know Jesus? So how I came to know Jesus, uh, man, I was 16 years old. And long story short, this guy invites me to church. I end up going to the service. And I'll never forget in the back of this youth group, uh, I'm standing there. And, uh, and I said, you know, hey, Jesus, I don't know if you're real. Uh, you know, my grandma said you died on the cross and, you know, you rose again and all this stuff. So, but if you're real, I dare you to touch me. And uh, what happened next was this just crazy, overwhelming love just came over me. And I just began to weep and weep and weep uncontrollably. And, uh, you know, the guy who brought me, you know, he's like, yes, you know, he brings me up to the front. And there's this lady there and she says, would you like to receive Jesus in your heart? And I knew in that moment that it wasn't a decision that was going to be made just for that night. I knew this decision of saying yes would literally change the course of my life. And that night I gave my life to Jesus and, uh, and my life has never been the same since. What's the story of how your high school campuses? Yeah, I remember it when the Lord spoke to me in 2009 and he... He told me he wanted me to go to the high schools of America. Uh, he said he'd partner with my life to do it. Students in the hearts of prayer would be restored back to the schools of America. And uh, I remember that as an 18 year old thinking, man, like, God, you got the wrong guy. Like, there's just no way, like, you have the right person for this. You know, I'm so unqualified. I, you know, I would joke around like, I can't even clean my room. Like, how is this gonna happen? But I remember at 18 years old, that's where the Lord first spoke to me that I would see schools reach. And little did I know that that yes I would give uh, as an 18 year old would lead me here almost 10 years later, seeing thousands across America saved and reached with the good news. So today we're on our way to a high school in South Central uh, in Los Angeles, California. And this was a school that we've been reaching for three years now. We've had the amazing opportunity to work with the administration at the school. So every week with the student uh, leaders inside the, the campus, we're able to go do something called Connect Days. And that's where uh, we, you know, we go in a day before the club and we pass out donuts or whatever you know the school allow the type of food. And we just connect with students, we hang with students, we get to you know hear their stories, a little bit about their lives. And then the next day, which is today, so we got our Connect Day yesterday, today we actually have a Jesus Club, which uh, that'll be held either in a gymnasium uh, you know, sometimes they're in classrooms if, uh, if the gym's not available. Theaters, auditoriums, cafetoriums, uh, wh whatever large rooms are available on campus is typically where we go to hold our meetings. So we work with uh, about three campuses personally here in the area. Uh, throughout the U.S., uh, we work with around 96 currently, uh, around almost 12,000 a week that gather. So what you're going to witness today in one of the schools is just kind of what's taking place you know, every day uh, in, you know, in the U.S. in various schools. I just met with a guy this morning who's in two schools getting into three. So just imagine this, you know, times 96 just across, across the U.S. Cameron, what's going so, on? Yeah, man, I'm so excited, bro. We're about to have tons of kids in here today, man. <laughs> Right now we're setting up for the Jesus Club. We have maybe like seven, eight minutes before the class, uh, before lunch starts. So we're just throwing down. We get to lead something like this. I actually encountered God in high school, so for me to be able to be here for other students to encounter God is is a real deal. If you're gonna take one thing with you into 2019, then let it be this: take God from being here into being here. Stop having a God that's only in your mind. Have a God that actually can reach your heart. Do you realize that? Do you realize when you 
only have God here, all you have is information. When you have God here, you have revelation. Where all of a sudden you understand, oh my God, this isn't just a religion. This is a relationship. Oh my God, this isn't just a Jesus club thing once a week. I can actually live it every single day. In every school that I've been in, um, there's no such thing as a bad kid, just a broken one. And as we've gone in, um, you know, rather it be a school that's in a really nice neighborhood or one that's in more of a rough neighborhood, I would say the brokenness across the campuses of America that I've seen uh, is one that has a simple answer of hope. His, his name is Jesus. Statistics say uh, that I think it's two out of three people that come to Christ come to him before the age of 18. It's where they make their initial decision to follow Jesus. And then 18 to 25 is where they make their final. And so that's always been in our hearts. How, do, how are we a part of the initial decision of a kid coming to Christ. I think for years we've thought, uh, you know, that the mission field and the, the, you know, the broken were outside of our nation. And as I've been going to schools now for almost 10 years, I can truly say that the mission field is right in our backyard. You know, the public high schools of America uh, with the, you know, the addictions, the suicides, with the brokenness, with the divided families, uh, you can truly see that the need uh, is is now, and, and the answer is you. And if we're able to to go, uh, you know, with this message of hope, with the message of Jesus, to take to these campuses, I truly believe we can begin to shift the next 10, 20, 30 years. You know, what's what's happened in the last decades, we can really change that in our generation. You know, I've literally sat inside of gyms and watched students before my eyes as the good news has been going forward, just begin to weep under the power of God. I remember this one time we did an altar call and 450 students stood to their feet to receive Jesus. And the craziest thing that I remember that day was the, the sound of their shoes uh, thundering down the bleachers as they all came down to receive Christ, where you literally get to see them go from unbelief into belief. Uh, them literally go from darkness into light. Uh, them literally go and you know from uh, addiction to freedom from depression to joy and I just remember you know thinking to myself man as I'm hearing this in the natural I can only imagine how the foundations of hell must be shaking uh, as as children were now about to move from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light what would you say to the person watching questioning like could God really use yeah. my yes in my life you know I would say that there is more to lose by not risking than if you actually risk uh, I think today uh, we have this concept that we could live safe and sent. And in the gospel, that's just not what you see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, Acts, any books you read. Uh, you, you have to pick one. You're either going to live safe or you're going to live sent. And I think when you choose the sent life, uh, it comes with many risks. It comes with many unknowns. It comes with, you know, the, the possibility of what if God doesn't show up if I step out. But I always lean on the side of what if he does? What if you step out and forever history has changed in your city? You know, I was a, a 18 year old boy who gave a weak yes to God and that weak yes has brought me here 10 years later. We've seen that weak yes call other young people to say, man, if, if, if he can do it, if they can do it, then so could we. And I would just say, you know, as you're watching, like there are nations that are waiting for your weak yes. There are high schools that are waiting for your weak yes. There are young people who are bound in, in brokenness that are waiting for your weak yes. So take that week yesterday and, and give it to Jesus and watch him just like that bread. He, he, you know, he broke it. I, I've seen God do more with the broken pieces of my life uh, and multiply it than I have him with the whole pieces.